Good morning and welcome back to my channel and morning devotions. My name is Maggie. If this is your first time stopping by, I hope you decide to like and subscribe and click the notification bell. Then come back and check out some of the other content I have on my channel. It is Monday, September the 30th. Last day of September. Uh, okay, we're getting ready to enter the last quarter of the year, the last three months. So, uh, let's see, we are beginning week 40. Our focus for week 40 is Love for Others, Part 2. And our uh, devotion today is entitled Motivating Love. Our scripture comes from the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verses 24 through 25 out of the New Living Translation. And it reads, Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. And of course, this is the same scripture from a different translation that says, forsake not the assembling together of others. Let us not neglect our meeting together. So very important. Okay, let's get into this. You can encourage others who are in a season of need. That's an obvious way to show love. Sometimes overlooked is the fact that you can encourage others, especially those who are in a season of plenty, to join you in acts of love and good works. Christians should constantly be thinking of ways to motivate themselves and fellow believers to help others. One of the best ways to do so is to be a dedicated member of a solid Christian fellowship. So many opportunities within the church to help the homeless, to help battered women, to help the needy in your community. Our church or my church has a food pantry and a clothes closet. And um, the clothes closet is managed very well. People bring in donations and literally on the days when the clothes closet is open, anybody and everybody can come in, take what they want or need. The kids for school, you need a suit for a, a job interview and you don't own one. You need a gown for a wedding. You know what I'm saying? You're, you've, you've been invited to a wedding, you, you know, just whatever it is, whatever you, everyday clothes. This is to provide for those who do not have a whole lot of money. So they're, we're clothing them and we're feeding them for free. And you don't even have to be a member of the church. Although I will say, the church makes sure that those that are members are also taken care of, first and foremost, because they're, they're there meeting the needs of the people that are part of that body of believers. And also, they don't say, okay, you don't have any because we got to take care of them first. No, they make sure everybody gets it. But they do make sure that the members are aware and that everything that they need is taken care of, which is what we should be doing. And if you're not part of a fellowship, you're not aware of things like that. You see what I mean? All right. If your church is truly Bible believing, it cannot help but be actively meeting the needs of people in its community and encouraging its members to work hand in hand in loving service. We do this with children's ministry because our church is right smack dab in the middle of a low income community. And we've done so many community projects. And I know that as we're coming into October, a lot of people and believe me, looking at me, I'm not a Halloween person at all. Uh, it's demonic in its roots. I do not believe in glorifying demons or devils or anything like that or giving them place in any way to desensitize our children to the wickedness and the evil nature of those things. But for the children who are innocent, for them, it's about costumes and candy. I'm not ever going to not have uh, pass out candy on Halloween because children are coming to my door and I am able to interact with my neighbors who are probably doing participating in complete ignorance. And I'm not going to put myself in a self-righteous, holier than thou attitude and deny their child the fun of candy and dressing up. Now, with that said, I'm also passing out gospel tracts. I'm also praying before I am praying over my candy and praying for everyone who comes to my door to feel 
the, the presence of the Holy Spirit and that the Holy Spirit and angels will protect those children in their innocence. Okay. My word also tells me this is the day the Lord has made. I shall rejoice and be glad in it. Just because the devil has hijacked the day and used it for his evil does not mean the day is now forever evil. Mm -mm. That October 31st was also Reformation Day. Martin Luther nailed his reforms on the door of the church, breaking away from the Catholic Church because he did not believe, he said it was by grace we are saved, not of our works, which is what the emphasis was. And there was a lot of corruption in the Catholic Church at that time. And he boldly stood up against it. That's something that you can celebrate. But my church on that day, we have an open community event. And the members of the church who wish to do trunk or treat will decorate their cars. Nothing demonic, nothing scary. That's what we ask of anybody participating because we're not going to have that on the premises. But there's music. We have like hot dogs and chili and the members of the church bring the chili. There's the clothes closet in the food pantry and people come, the police come. And it's just a wonderful community event. The community is low income, so there's a lot of crime. There's a lot of kids that are being neglected and they don't have fun. They don't have good role models uh, oftentimes in their home. And we've had some of these neighborhood kids come to the church and just as wretched as they could be in the way they behave towards themselves and others and with no, and one kid even facing jail time for something. And God did a miracle in his life and it transformed him completely. He was hopeless and thought he was going to jail. And he was like 14 years old. And we prayed for him and stood up for him. And he wound up, the judge was like, I don't know why I'm doing this, but they gave him um, community service or something. And he was just blown away. And he said, only God could have done that. So he knew, and we are being a light, and we are having prayer. We have prayer teams on the premises for people. There's a message that's spoken, but there's fun for the children, wholesome goodness for the family, and we are counteracting every devil, every demonic activity the devil would try to stir up on that night. We are there as a counterbalance, and we provide the light of Christ in the midst of darkness. I don't think God would ever shake his finger if you chose to do that on Halloween. I think he would applaud your efforts. And again, I am very against Halloween. I'm not for it at all. So, okay. The author of Hebrew, uh, the author of Hebrews urges believers to not give up meeting together. Gathering for church each week is immensely important and not to be neglected or done just when the mood strikes you or there's nothing better to do. Hearing the word preached, worshiping and serving others together are excellent ways to show encouragement and love. And I know that some people have mobility issues and maybe they haven't been able to leave their house shut ins. I know that happens. But if you're not physically disabled, what's your reason? Now, if you do not have transportation, you can reach out to churches. Many churches have church vans. Many churches have a busing ministry where they have people that go around and they pick up children in the neighborhood. And if you need to get on a list, you can find out if someone, um, if a church has a busing ministry, say, I'd love to come, but I have transportation issues. Okay. A church is going to do its best to find a way to get you there. Many churches like mine have an online presence that became a thing when COVID hit. Thankfully, we had a presence online prior to it's live streamed on YouTube, on Facebook, those things you may have to, if you don't have the technology, uh, start getting yourself acquainted with those options. Not as your substitute, but a way of checking out the preacher and the preaching and the worship and all that prior to many people have found us online and have been like, wow, oh, that's a local church right here in Hampton Roads. I need to go check this place out and wound up coming and being part of the Freedom Fellowship family. That's where I get to end is Freedom Fellowship. And I'll try to get the link to um, our live stream right here at the YouTube page where you can check us out live 
and worship with us. It's always great if you don't have a church to find an online presence where you can receive some preaching, Where, but it's really good to find one in your local community so that you can be actively doing something to bless others. That's really what God's calling us to do. So let's pray. And again, as always, I don't mean to say anything that sounds even remotely like condemnation because there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ. I am simply trying to urge you with the importance of what God's word says. We need to be coming together. And if you've been hurt by church, bad church experiences, let me say how sorry I am about that. I myself have experienced some bad experiences, but that's not the church. That's people. Okay. And you're going to run into people who are fallen, people who make mistakes, people who um, have work that God still has to do in their hearts and in their minds and attitudes. I'm glad he doesn't give up on us. I've had some very bad experiences, not from higher ups, but from people in the church. And it's a hard place to be because you want to go there, but you have people that make life miserable. And sometimes God is just saying, go on, move on, move on, move on. And we've had to do that. We've had to move on uh, when God said, okay, we're done here. I got someplace else I want you to be. And that's why it's so important to tune our ears to what he's saying. Not to tune our ears so that they're tickled and everything is sugar-coated the way we want to hear it, because we don't want to hear the conviction of the Holy Spirit that tells us we have to change anything we're doing in our lives. Okay, but a pastor who does not address those things, a pastor that looks to sugarcoat and tickle ears is not following the Holy Spirit. Okay, I'm just saying, speak the truth. He has to make room for the Holy Spirit and you're going to find a unifying message coming out of all the churches. Okay, no matter you're tuning into online services or you're attending in person. Basically, the theme of what they're preaching is going to be the same. If you're looking at them, you will see the common thread. And that's the voice of the Holy Spirit. That's the unity of the Holy Spirit. If you have all these churches preaching one thing, you got some one off over here saying crazy stuff. Well, you have to hear the Holy Spirit. Okay. It could be that guy's the one who's only preaching the right thing, but I, you'll know, you will recognize what's true and what's not, especially if you are cultivating a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Even if you don't know how, you can just ask, Lord, I want to hear you better. I want to recognize your voice above my own. Give me discernment, please. I don't want to be deceived. I don't want to be led down paths of deceptions by false teachers and preachers. Lord, help me to see and recognize. When you are sincerely praying that, you are going to get it. He's not just going to leave you guessing high and dry. You're going to have an epiphany and a revelation and go, wow, okay, that for sure is not where I need to be. You have to sincerely seek it though. And when we are in relationship with him, we begin to recognize his voice. And every day he will give you practice. Every day, I'm not kidding. Every day he will say things to you. You'll have a thought come to your head. You'll be like, what? You know, and sometimes it's him telling you something that's going to happen and then it happens. And then he's like, see, that was me. That was me telling you. He'll do things like that. You know, those deja vu moments when you're like, I just, how did I know that that was going to happen? Nine times out of 10, that's likely the Holy Spirit teaching you to hear his voice. Okay. You'll get that feeling in your knowing place about something. You'll have an inkling about something. And you follow that gut instinct. Okay, gut instincts, nine times out of ten, are probably the Holy Spirit giving you a warning. Okay, just so we know. But you continually ask him, help me hear your voice clearly. Help me not to be deceived. Give me eyes that see and ears that hear. You pray those prayers with all sincerity. And he knows if you're sincere or not. He will do it. Ask him for wisdom. James tells us, if you need wisdom, if you lack wisdom, ask him and he'll give it to you. Ask him for those things. When you ask him, he will give them freely because he wants you to be in relationship with him. Okay. And the only way to develop a relationship with anyone is to spend time with them and talk with them every day. Okay. <laughs> Not just, I mean, how long do you think a friend's going to stick around if you only talk to them once a month? Or if they're only scratching at your door when they need something. 
you're not making relationship at all. You're kind of just using them for whatever reason. All right, again, no condemnation. I'm just trying to urge and encourage you to really seek God and then find a place so that we can express our love for Christ to others through our own actions and taking care of their needs, that we are motivated to do things by the Holy Spirit, by love for one another. So let's pray. God, people gain so much through serving one another. Help us, Lord, to be motivated by your Holy Spirit to do so. For those who are still struggling to find a home church, for whatever reason, we are asking you, O oh God, to help them connect, give them divine appointments and connections. Help us to hear your voice clearly with eyes that see and ears that hear, that we would not be led astray or deceived. And right now, Lord, we do lift up the areas devastated by Hurricane Helene. Father, those areas that are flooded, people displaced, homes destroyed. Father, we are praying right now that you send help quickly, oh God. Help them to recover quickly. Lord, we thank you. We give you glory, Father, for all that's doing and help us, Father, to be a blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. I just remembered that as I was praying. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for prompting. I don't know if you're in that area. If you are, I pray for the Holy Spirit to quickly lead you into recovery and that everything lost will be restored, that the floodwaters will recede and that help will come. I know that uh, we are in a uh, difficult time in this country, and it is never, when you're dealing with a presidential race, it is never about political party. It is always about righteousness versus darkness, and I pray the Lord enable you to see that. That's truly what this is about, and that righteousness will prevail over darkness every single time. Some things have been allowed in order for exposures to take place. On November the 5th, 2020, I woke up and I said, Holy Spirit, I don't understand what's happening. And he said, I need to expose so I can dispose. That's all he said to me. For this, for the last four years, that's what I've been hanging on to. And I'm staggered at what has been exposed. And what is coming? There's an exposure coming of international. I think I said this a couple of days ago. An exposure happening that is going to expose all the players of every evil deed that's happened, not just in the United States, every plot and scheme, it's going to be exposed. Nothing's going to be left covered up. Everything is going to be uncovered. And it is going to be a shocking international scandal. So be looking to God be the glory, not to take delight in someone's demise or their downfall. I take delight when the enemy is defeated and he is exposed. Every little dirty trick he's tried to do to God's people is not going to succeed. It's going to be openly exposed. And I don't know how he's going to do it. I don't know what way. I remember hearing from the prophet of God that all this exposure of Sean Combs, P. Diddy, is just a precursor to an even bigger exposure that's coming soon. So, wow. God, you know what you're doing. This is the God of heaven, our creator, keeping his covenant. Daniel 9, 4, he is a great and awesome God who always fulfills his covenants and keeps his promises. Okay, he made a covenant with the founders of the United States of America. Our nation is founded on a covenant with God. There's only one other nation that is founded on a covenant with God, and that's the nation of Israel. God made the covenant with Israel. He's keeping it. We made a covenant with God. He's keeping it. Okay? Only two nations were founded on covenants with God. The United States and Israel, as I'm repeating myself. So just take note of that and watch and see what God does. He is faithful and he is good. And there's going to be no doubt there's a God in heaven. And there's going to be no doubt as to where he stands. We have to align ourselves with him. Period. 
I love you guys. You guys have a wonderful day. Make sure you comment below if you have any kind of uh, prayer requests that you would like prayer for. I'm honored and delighted to come into agreement with you because I firmly believe God's word. When two agree on earth concerning anything, it shall be done by my Father in heaven. Have a wonderful, blessed Monday. It's a little wet and rainy here as the hurricane is still kind of lingering in the area and those weather patterns are still doing their thing. But I hope you guys have a wonderful Monday. God bless you and bye until next time.